Hey guys, welcome back to Construction 101. I'm Jordan. And I'm Manny. And we are going to complete this bookshelf door. We just finished building our cabinet for our hidden office door. And as you'll see, we've got a bunch of dado grooves here to tie the shelves in. And we're going to need to cover those up. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a little spackle and sand that out so it's perfectly smooth so we have a nice finish on our cabinet once we go to paint it. Uh, right here we just put the, the toe kick in for the cabinet to give it that finished look so that it can float very slightly off the ground so when we put the rollers under it, it's going to open seamlessly and you're not even going to notice. We're going to go ahead and sand down the spackle that we put on these joints. It's been drying for about an hour now and um, we're going to get these joints smooth so when we paint it, you're not going to see it. Alright, now it's time to clean up. Got a little air compressor here. We'll spray it off once more before we paint, but I just wanted to get the loose dirt off and then use what they call tack cloth. Tack cloth is kind of a, a cheese cloth that has a bit of a wax coating on it. It's slightly sticky, but it, it doesn't leave residue on your project. So I'm gonna use this wax tack cloth and pick up the dirt that the air compressor wasn't able to blow out. So this will roll across your surface and pick up the, those last remaining particles that you don't want sticking in your paint. So I'll just go over my joints and where I want to get that deep dust out of there. This is kind of like having a damp rag, but you don't have to sit here and wait for it to dry afterwards. So that's about it. These are fully reusable. so keep them back in the plastic bag. It doesn't even necessarily have to be sealed as it's uh, wax based. Um, but you can use these over and over again, fold them over on themselves, use a clean surface, and you can use these for multiple projects before you toss them out. Again, tack cloth, very great tool. Now we're about ready to bring her over and set her up for paint. Okay, here we are with cabinet number two. What we're gonna do is again, We've already pre-mixed up some diluted paint, 10 to 1 ratio, and it's a paint and primer in one, so you'll see this is an unfinished cabinet, and you can see our patchwork that we did to hide these dado grooves in the corners. They're all patched and sanded, and it's going to be smooth, so we're going to go ahead and get started. spray this a second coat again it's a really nice light spray because we're using a stain spray gun and so it, you got to be patient and you got to go slow and you just got to make sure you have good even coverage so we're gonna go ahead and get to it uh There you have it, uh, two coats on a cabinet that's going to be turned into a door. Now what we have right underneath is about a two inch space that we need to fill because we want to put a set of wheels underneath here. We need these wheels to protrude a little bit further than the bottom edges of this cabinet. In order to do that, right now I see I'm about uh, eighth inch or so shy. So we need to add a spacer to the bottom of our cabinet so that we can bring so that we could bring 
those wheels further down so we're rolling on the ground and that takes a lot of the load transfer off of the hinges so the jam is not doing all the work because this is a bit of a heavy piece of furniture here. It's not like a standard door. So in order to do that, we're going to take this piece of half inch plywood, glue and screw it to the bottom of here. So we're going to apply glue, we're going to throw it in here, we're going to add about six screws to suck it into the base here. And then afterwards, we're going to take this set of dolly wheels, throw them here in two places so it's basically gliding along the ground as it opens on the hinge pivot. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Nanny, you want to take it over? Sure. So what we're using here, we're using this uh, Type Bomb uh, Ultimate Wood Glue, which is uh, very effective in this type of uh, application. You want to make sure you uh, uh, shake the glue and get any uh, any container or whatnot. Just put it in there. And you get your brush. Just uh, apply it. One of the reasons we use tight bond number three for the type of glue is because it has a bit of a longer open assembly time, which means it doesn't dry as quick as tight bond one. And so we have a little bit of time before we mount this in place, move it into position. This actually works really well for laminate layups, like if you're doing a molded piece of furniture or something like that. So type bond three is a really good adhesive to allow you to work uh, without the rush of waiting for the glue to dry. So we're going to put this in place and I don't know if you can tell in the video but there's a bit of a bow here. So what we're going to do is we're going to strap that down, suck it in with this 2x2 two two, and then lock it down with this 4x4 four four over it to transfer the load so we have full adhesion underneath. Well, we know this is going to be sucked up tight because of our, our board here. We still want to reinforce it with screws so we can have more of a mechanical attachment rather than just the glue holding it up. So we're going to lock it, this in with about six screws. One in each corner and two down the center. So as it's, it's secured with the clamps, I'm going to lock it in here. Now that we got our spacer, uh, we're going to need to add our sets of caster wheels. And this is a, a, a tripod set of wheels so that the load is going to be spread out over the full surface here rather than a single wheel pivot point because I don't want this thing to teeter or anything like that. So we're going to go ahead and uh, pilot hole because we're going to lag screw through the bottom of the, the caster here into our two layers of wood. So we've got a couple of lag bolts here. Uh, I'll go get a, a drill bit so we can pre-pilot it. If you want to line that up and get it ready to go. All right, there we go. As you can see, if you put a straight edge right across here, we're actually going to hit our caster wheel and stick out roughly a little less than a quarter of an inch. So when it presses into the floor, it's going to float the bottom of the cabinet so it rolls. Alright guys, that's our video for today. That's part one of our bookshelf door video series. We're going to show you how to build it, paint it, and install it so you can create for yourself a secret office. Thanks for watching Construction 101.